Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. On Thursday of last week, uh, Labor's leader, Bill Shorten, outlined our plan for infrastructure in Australia. In his speech, the leader of the opposition recognised that in order to generate economic growth, in order to generate more jobs, in order to generate more liveable cities and regions connected, we need more infrastructure. In spending taxpayers' money on infrastructure, we need to do this in a transparent and responsible way. That's why we established Infrastructure Australia, making sure that projects stacked up in a transparent way and were funded on the basis of those projects which would produce the greatest return to the national economy and to the improvement of the living standards of the Australian people. That's why we've been very critical that projects that had been through the Infrastructure Australia process, including the Melbourne Metro, the Cross River Rail project, the Managed Motorways program, were all cut. And projects that had not had published business cases funded, including the East West Road project in Melbourne, Perth Freight Link, and West Connects in Sydney. The West Connects project, of course, uh, is uh, connected uh, to my electorate. I am in favour of roads. I do not believe that you can simply have just public transport, but I'm also in favour of public transport because I don't believe you can just have roads. You need to have an integrated transport system in order for cities to function properly. In relation to West Connects, I agree that people travelling from Western Sydney uh, need an improved M4, that the current circumstances of whereby it just stops at the T-junction and traffic is funnelled onto Parramatta Road uh, is not acceptable. I also agree that there needs to be much better access for freight on the M5 to and from the Port of Botany. As I said in a speech to the Bus Industry Federation on the 24th of March 2015, for as long as this project has been discussed, its object has been to take cars from Sydney's west to the CBD and freight to Port Botany. As is currently proposed, West Connects does neither. I'm all for a solution to ease traffic congestion in Sydney." End quote. But this project will not meet its objective, and I'm concerned that it could add Sydney being congestion where West Connects meets the local street network. What concerns me is it is unclear where the traffic will go once it reaches the St Peter's interchange. There are also concerns for the residents of Haberfield, Roselle and Annandale about the traffic implications of the extended M4. We don't know where the exhaust stacks will be and we don't really know the impact the project will have on these suburbs. The other thing that concerns me is that governments are investing millions of taxpayer dollars on this infrastructure but the decisions have not been transparent and we don't know if they're based on a business case that stands up to scrutiny. In fact, uh, when in government, Labor funded $25 million for a study to ensure that the business case into any improvements on Sydney's road network, in particular getting freight to and from the port, was complete and transparent. We are yet to see the result of that study. In May 2014, I wrote an article for the Daily Telegraph where I said that, and I quote, new roads or new rail can be a very effective way to reduce congestion and boost economic productivity, but that when governments spend scarce dollars, they ought to be certain up front that they get it right and that the investment delivers on the desired outcome. I wrote that the current design, under the current design, West Connects was, to quote, a road to a traffic jam. That was nearly one and a half years ago and we still don't know if they've got it right and it still looks like being a road to a traffic jam. With the West Connects project we are told the business case has been done by call on the bad government to release the business case to public scrutiny. In December 2014 I called on the Premier Mike Baird to release the full business case after the New South Wales Audit Office report identified serious deficiencies in the planning and quality assurance processes surrounding the project. The audit report stated the preliminary business case, quote, fell well short of the standard required for such a document. While the New South Wales audit did not address the issue of value for public money, it identified serious deficiencies in the project planning and evaluation. The plan that has been done to date does not demonstrate the benefit to the public. I'm concerned about 
where the cars that travel to the end of the interchange are going to go and the impact that will have on our local community. Cars will be transferred onto local streets that are already congested. They will impact on the traffic on the exciting main street of Newtown. Now we're told that there will be no clear ways in King Street and I have spoken to the New South Wales Minister Duncan Gay and got an assurance that that will be the case. But we need to make sure that that is made absolutely certain, otherwise uh, the Newtown uh, CBD will be impacted adversely with consequences for jobs and economic activity. The Newtown shopping area is the most visited shopping, food and entertainment area outside of the CBD. This is an interesting, active and energetic area and it has a great sense of community. This is partly built up by people using the main street and walking around the area. They see their neighbours talk to each other and the community is built. While we've been told there'll be no clear ways, West Connex is not in control of what happens in the, in the local streets. So we need to make sure that that occurs because the RMS isn't part of this project. The West Connex project stops and the RMS take over. I have not seen, and the local people have not seen any plan from the RMS to show that they have the flow on traffic organised, and that is the concern. Likewise, uh, traffic could be channelled onto Campbell Street, St Peter's. Anyone who has a look at that street and then into Edgware Road, Enmore, knows that the consequences of this are quite bizarre to suggest that this will be a major thoroughfare that will then just stop at that intersection. No wonder the local community is concerned. The other thing that appears not to have been considered by either the RMS or the West Connex Delivery Authority is the integration of roads and public transport. The former Prime Minister, we know, had no interest in public transport. However, when planning major infrastructure road projects, it is incumbent on the planners to ensure that where possible, roads and public transport are integrated. In a city the size of Sydney, which is continuing to grow, we must plan to ensure we are not continually putting more cars onto our roads, which just leads to further congestion. We need to plan to enable the use of public transport and active transport to promote sustainability and livability in our cities. There is no evidence to date that these issues have been considered or planned for in any serious way by any of the relevant authorities. Part of the problem, of course, is that there are so many different authorities, it is very hard for the local community to uh, be able to engage in proper community processes. The West Connects Delivery Authority website shows cute little icons that tell us of the jobs to be created, the apprentices that will be trained, that drivers will save 40 minutes from the Par Parramatta uh, to the airport, that urban renewal will occur and removal of traffic from local roads, but it doesn't pass proper scrutiny. Anyone who goes to that area around the St Peter's interchange knows that it is already a massive struggle to get from there either to the airport or to the port. Increased traffic flow into this area where you have the largest residential growth occurring anywhere in Australia around that South Sydney area means gridlock. And the government, the New South Wales government really needs to explain far better what will happen to the traffic once it leaves that interchange. Removal of traffic from local roads, uh, while traffic will be removed in some areas, it will be transferred onto the narrow streets of the inner west and the inner city. The greatest way, of course, to have urban renewal, as we know, is public transport. Have a look at projects like the regional rail link in Victoria and you'll see how successful uh, urban renewal projects can occur. This is, of course, a state government project. It's partly funded, partly funded by the federal coalition government, but it's managed and operated by the state government. So it has a responsibility to give the community information, to give assurances that they can rely upon, show the community the plan for dealing with the traffic that arrives at the end of the West Connect route, and importantly, show the business case. I think communities are prepared to accept some disruption for infrastructure development. What they won't accept is that disruption when you have no business case and no transparency in the process. And that is what the New South Wales Government must do when it comes to this project.